ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد All praise and thanks belong to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise Him, we thank Him, we glorify Him and we seek His help and aid and we ask Him to protect us and to forgive us from the evils of ourselves and from the sins that we commit Whoever Allah guides, there is none who can misguide and whoever he causes to go astray, there is none who can guide. I testify that there is no one worthy of worship but Allah. And I testify that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his servant and messenger. Verily, the best of speech is the book of Allah. And the best of guidance is the guidance of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the worst of religious matters are those that are innovated and every religious innovation is a bid'ah and every bid'ah is a misguidance and every misguidance will be in the fire of hell my brothers and my sisters whatever allah azawajal has helped us to do in ramadan was for a reason you fasted you did not eat nor drink, although you were hungry and thirsty. Why? Because it was you who decided to do this. It was you who decided to spend time reading the Quran. It was you who decided to give up your sleep to pray at night. It was you who decided to give charity and be generous. It was you who decided to be more courteous and kind. And it was you who decided to restrain your tongue and speak the truth and give up slandering and backbiting in Ramadan. It was with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you decided and you were able to accomplish all of these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show you and wants to show me that if you bring in the help of Allah and you decide, then you can make changes and be better. Allah wants to show you that if you decide and you ask Allah for help, then you will be able to continue after Ramadan. Post Ramadan, is not the same as Ramadan but we have to carry the practices and the lessons that we have learned in Ramadan my brothers and my sisters Ramadan is over one of the true signs of acceptance is transformation change for the better what has happened in Ramadan and what Allah helped us to do in Ramadan was because of three things. One, it happened because of the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Two, it happened because of your taqwa and your obedience to Allah. And three, it happened because of ijtima'u ta'ah gathering together upon the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now that Ramadan is over, 
if you keep these three things, you will be able to maintain some of the same practices you did during Ramadan. If you are able to overcome weaknesses in Ramadan, you can continue to overcome weaknesses out of Ramadan by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything you wish to do, it is Allah Azza wa Jal who can make it possible. If you want to make transformations, it is Allah Azza wa Jal alone who can make that possible. So don't depend and trust yourself. Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and depend on his help to transform your lives and to continue the same after Ramadan. We have to make lots and lots of dua and to be close to Allah and depend on him and we put our trust in him and you will find the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In addition to that, my brothers and my sisters, the same way we enjoyed our worship in Ramadan, do you want to continue enjoying your worship in the same way out of Ramadan? Allah gave us a few gifts in Ramadan. Do you want it to continue after Ramadan? Are you willing to enjoy the same blessings out of Ramadan? Do you want to experience the same nearness and consciousness of Allah out of Ramadan? At the conclusion of Ramadan, some of the companions like Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an would say, we wish we knew who among us were accepted so we can congratulate them and who among us were rejected so we can console them we ask allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are accepted ameen ya rabbal alameen my brothers and my sisters the other thing is our taqwa after developing taqwa the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will protect you from harm and ease you into his mercy. Now that Ramadan is over, your taqwa will prevent you from committing sins. Your taqwa will be a shield against shaitan. You have to think about a plan to enable you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now that Ramadan is over. You must have a plan in place to continue worshiping Allah azza wa jal after Ramadan. What are your plans now that Ramadan is over? What are your plans now that Ramadan is over regarding Jannah and Jahannam? So you must have a plan in place. My brothers and my sisters, Ramadan has ended, but it doesn't mean that our obligations to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should come to an end. Our obligations to Allah end with our debt. Although the month of Ramadan came to an end, the rights of Allah do not end until death. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَكِينَ And worship your Lord until there comes to you the certainty of death. My brothers and my sisters, we are still obligated to keep our duties to Allah and to worship Him as we did in Ramadan. We are still required to fulfill all our obligations to Allah and to stay away from all the prohibitions of Allah. We are still obligated to stay away from all the haram activities that we had given up in Ramadan, like lying, cheating, backbiting, gossiping, 
and spreading rumors and looking at and listening to haram regarding our ibadat our acts of worship let's start with the fasting my brothers and my sisters now that ramadan is over let us not stop fasting after ramadan as we all know fasting has tremendous benefits for our health and it helps in building our relationship with Allah Azza wa Jal. So we should not give up fasting. We should fast the six days of Shawwal as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told us. An Abi Ayyub al Ansari radiallahu an Anna Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam aqal Man Sama Ramadan ثُمَّتْ بَعَهُ سِتًّا مِنْ شَوَّالٍ كَانَ كَسْيَامِ الدَّهَرُ Hadith reported in Sahih Muslim that Abu Ayyub al-Ansari radiallahu an reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said whoever fast the month of Ramadan and then follows it with six days of fasting in the month of Shawwal. It will be as if he fasted for the entire year. Hadith collected in, in Sahih Muslim. My brothers and my sisters. Then in addition to the six days of Shawwal, we should make it a routine to fast Mondays and Thursdays. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to do, we should try fasting three days per month. The same way Ramadan taught us to make fasting a routine, we should make Mondays and Thursdays a routine by the help of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Next is our five daily salah. We must continue with our five daily prayers on time. And it's better if we can continue praying in jama'ah with our families at home while the masajids are closed. And inshallah, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, once the masajids are reopened, then we should try to at least pray one or two salah in the masjid. But for now, we should continue praying with our families at home as we are doing in Ramadan, as we did in Ramadan. So our salah must continue on time after Ramadan as well by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, Next is our relationship with the Quran. Don't cut your relation with the Quran. You spent hours upon hours reciting and listening to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Ramadan every day. Don't leave it off. Continue reciting the book of Allah after Ramadan. Put this in your plan. To read the Quran every day, even if, if, even if it is one page per day, but be consistent and build on it. So we should continue our relationship with the Book of Allah by reading it, by reflecting upon it, by acting upon it as well as teaching it to others by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and my sisters, this will help you in your daily lives. This will help you in your daily life as well as your family to receive the mercy and the blessings of Allah azza wa jal. So my brothers and my sisters, and with all of that, your focus will shift to the Akhirah rather than this life. The same way we were focused on the next life in Ramadan, 
it should motivate us to focus on the hereafter after Ramadan. We should only use what we need from this dunya in preparation for our akhirah. Our goal should not be for this dunya. Our goal should be for the hereafter. We should take what we need only from this dunya in preparation for our hereafter. There is a beautiful saying from Abu Dhar radiallahu an. Someone came to visit him and they said, O Abu Dhar, where are your furniture and belongings? Where are your stuff? He said, We have a house better than this house that we are sending our belongings to. They said, But you have to have some stuff here that you need to use here. He said, The owner of this house is not going to let us stay in it. What is he talking about? He is talking about two houses, my brothers and my sisters. His house here and his other house in Jannah. He said, we are not going to stay here forever. So we are sending everything to our permanent house in the hereafter. So think about this my brothers and my sisters. Are you busy building your house here or over there? Is your house here better than your house over there? He said, the owner of this house wouldn't let me stay in it. My brothers and my sisters, the house that you are living in, you're not the owner. Who is the owner? Allah Azza wa Jal is the owner. So let us not get distracted by the dunya and forget to build our house in the hereafter. Let us not get distracted in the dunya and forget to build our house in Jannah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'iril muslimina min kulli dhambin فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه وأصلي وأسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. My brothers and my sisters. So we have to fear Allah in all the months and protect our deen. We have to be mindful. We have to be mindful of Allah and we have to protect our religion. Be mindful of your religion throughout your life because your deen your religion, your way of life, this is your main asset with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is your salvation. It is your salvation, your emancipation from the hellfire. So protect your deen, protect your religion, and hold on to it in all the months at, and at all times and not only in Ramadan. Not only in the month of Ramadan. Let us remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Lord of the month of Ramadan. Allah Rabbul Ramadan, He is the Lord of Ramadan. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the Lord of the month of Shawwal. And Allah Azza wa Jal is the Lord of all the months of the year. So the month of Ramadan is to be followed by giving thanks to Allah. Ramadan is over. We have to give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have to ask Allah for forgiveness also. And we have to be happy with the favors of Allah. 
who has enabled us to fast and to pray in the month of Ramadan. So we rejoiced by celebrating Eid due to this blessing and not because of the passing away of the month of Ramadan. My brothers and my sisters, rather we rejoice, we had a, a, an enjoyable Eid, we rejoice as we have followed through Ramadan with the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why we, we rejoice. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qul bifadlillahi bi rahmatih fa bi dhalika fal yafrahu huwa khayrun mimma yajma'oon. That say, Allah commands the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say, say in the bounty of Allah and in his mercy, in that let them rejoice. It is better than what they accumulate. So beware of heedlessness and giving up the obedience of Allah, my brothers and my sisters, because shaitan is eager to waste your good deeds. And he wants to erase all that you have done from good actions in Ramadan. Now that Ramadan is over, shaitan is quick to lure and to entice Muslims so they become free and unrestrained as if they have been released from prison. My brothers and my sisters, shaitan will try very hard to get you to indulge in entertainment and play and heedlessness and missing of prayers and other forbidden activities and actions. So beware of shaitan. Beware of shaitan and do not waste away those good deeds which you have worked so hard for in Ramadan. Remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that you don't want to waste your good deeds lest you become as Allah says kallati naqadat ghazlaha min ba'di quwwah like she who untwisted her spun of tread after it was strong so my brothers and my sisters I urge and encourage you to fear Allah and protect what you have worked hard for from the good deeds and repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for your shortcomings and mistakes because Allah accepts the repentance of those who repent. So we should be consistent in our dhikr, in our remembrance of Allah. We should not only remember Allah in the month of Ramadan and neglect our obedience to Allah in the rest of the months. We must continue to worship Allah, perform the night prayer, seek nearness to Allah and closeness to Allah. Let us continue building our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we initiated in Ramadan and continue to do all acts of obedience that we did during Ramadan. And we should not be neglectful and heedless. We should not be lazy and neglect our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of Ramadan. Throughout the year and throughout our lives, we must always be consistent in remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu dhkuru allaha dhikran kathira wa sabbihuhu bukratan wa asila that all you who believe remember Allah which with much remembrance and glorify his praises morning and evening. So my brothers and my sisters, we should always remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should obey him, keep our duties to him, be fearful of him, 
And we should always have the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times in all hours of our lives. We should continue to be charitable and generous out of Ramadan. We should break our bad habits and acquire new good habits. And in this way, we will, inshallah, by the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will improve ourselves as individuals as well as members of the ummah. My brothers and my sisters, in this way, we will be able to make a difference in our own lives and in the society at large. So to, his, so to help us continue after Ramadan, with the help of Allah, we have to decide, we have to make a plan, we have to work with the plan, and we have to be consistent on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it easy for us. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Ramadan. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our salah, our dua, and all our good deeds that we did. O oh Allah, make us from those who are forgiven and accepted in the month of Ramadan. O oh Allah, make us from among those who conclude the month of Ramadan with the best of deeds. Make us among those who are transformed in the month of Ramadan and be people of Jannah. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to continue upon taqwa, have mercy on us, and guide us through the straight path. Ameen, Ya Rabbal Alameen. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana. وَفِي الْآخِرَةِ حَسَنَةِ وَكِينَ عَذَابَ النَّارِ اللَّهُمَ إِنَّا نَسْأَلُكَ الْجَنَّةِ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إِلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلٍ وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ النَّارِ وَمَا قَرَّبَ إِلَيْهَا مِنْ قَوْلٍ وَعَمَلٍ وَنَسْأَلُكَ الْخَيْرِ مَا سَعَلَكَ عَبْدُكَ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ وَنَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الشَّرِّ مَا اسْتَعَاذَكَ مِنْهُ عَبْدُكَ مُحَمَّدٌ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا على طاعتك اللهم عنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن إبادتك اللهم احفظنا بالإسلام قياما واحفظنا بالإسلام قعودا واحفظنا بالإسلام رقودا اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقرب إلى حبك اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر أعداء الدين اللهم فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولي في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين والحكنا بالصالحين يا حي يا قيوم وبرحمتك نستغيث أصلح لنا شأننا كله ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وأجمعين أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين والمسلمات فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم